Okay, this is a 1977 Yamaha Access 500. I bought uh, the beginning of this year, or the middle of the year, I suppose. So March, I think I picked it up. Um, it was bought from a local uh, seller who had it in his garage. It wasn't working, uh, needed a, a bit of work doing to it. It was cheap. These bikes aren't very collectible. And uh, the, there weren't many sold in this in the, this country because they were, they were a bit lacklustre in performance. Um, and it's probably not the most attractive bike in the world. Um, the XS400 was uh, a bike I also used to own, which was a, was a nice, nicer looking bike than this. I'm not particularly keen on the back end, squared off, sort of like, it's very much a thing of its style, uh, of its time really. Um, but basically this bike needed a bit of work doing to it, it needed a new front tyre, the forks were bent and the forks are very hard to get hold of on these bikes. Um, but we managed to find a pair on eBay of course and managed to replace those. Um, they're not in the best condition but they're sealing okay. Um, but the rest of the bike was in, as you can see, it's in pretty original condition. I don't think that the original side panels, the tank and side panels, don't actually match properly. Um, but apart from that, the tank's in pretty nice condition and the side panels are, are not too bad either. They look like they've had a, a, a home spray job on them though, but they're, they, they work. They serve the purpose until I can find something that's a bit more suitable. It's got about, it had about 20, 27,000 miles on it when I got it. And I've managed, managed to rack up over 2,000 miles on this bike. Um, the engine is is really good. And the engine uh, initially was burning a little bit of oil when I got it. And I just thought, well, yeah, it's pretty bit worn out. Uh, but uh, as I started to use it more and more, it's become using less and less less oil. And the, and the compression has started to build up. So basically, I think the thing had been sitting around. Looking back at the history, it had been sitting around for sort of like, oh, sort of 15 years. And had done sort of like 20, 30 miles. And down to the nearest MOT station and of course and now it's just become um, tax exempt so there's no, no no tax to pay on it it doesn't need a regular MOT um, you can see I've got a non-authentic uh, tax disc to sort of like suit the bike when it would have first come out a few little problems go on with these bikes one of the problems is that behind this side cover here is the oil filter and the oil filter you cannot get anymore simply because it uses an M 22 thread and those M22 threads are a non-standard thread and they've since run out of stock years ago in Yamaha parts so what is available is an adapter plate that you um, you have to remove the side cover and take the the plate off and uh, behind behind this plate here there's a um, there's a uh, uh, another adapter that bolts to the engine, you have to remove that and put a new adapter on. Now Yamaha used to sell these adaptation plates, but of course they've become few and far between. There's some on eBay at the moment, manufactured by a third party, that basically lets you use, I think it's an F FZ600 um, oil filter, which is standard size thread. Um, so you can uh, replace the oil filter. Unfortunately they cost 99 quid and they're, they're not cheap. Uh, but it's worth doing obviously, the, the, actually the oil filter in here had a date on it and it, and it tied up with the, the bike hadn't ever done any mileage so the oil filter is basically new on this. I was luckily enough when I was searching through eBay find one, uh, uh, a genuine Yamaha one with its box and all its O-rings and things and I got it for 20 quid so just lucky to be there at the right sort of time. So yeah, it was a very basic engine. Uh, well, Basic now it is, but in its time it was it was something a bit special. It's double overhead cam and it's a balancer shaft, 180 degree crank, so it's a rocking couple as they call it. So as one piston comes up, the other one goes down, which gives it an uneven firing order. Um, and it does initially, when you're plodding up the road, sound a bit like a single, uh, but obviously it's not. It's it's a, it's a parallel twin. Um, performance is. Uh, okay I suppose uh, about about 48 horsepower uh, not particularly sort of um, sporty riding bike um, I think the XBR the Honda that I've also got is probably a bit more lively than this um, but it's a rever it, it does like to rev I mean it's quite talky at low down but the maximum power is made at about seven and a half eight thousand revs uh, you see the old old clocks the old traditional clock they put on the Yamahas uh, they're crazed a bit with the age but uh, yeah, that they, they work okay, and you can see it's just about to clock 30,000 miles. Um, yeah, everything else was pretty okay, really. I mean, the, 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 the cluster here was broken, I had to replace that. The master cylinder on the front, that's the seals have gone in that. They're easy enough to pick up and replace, so that was no problem at all. Um, the exhausts are um, Dunstall's copies, and they are 
not the quietest exhaust in the world, but they, they certainly work, and, and this, they, ma they match the bike, suit the bike pretty well. But the biggest drawback with these old bikes is the bloody points ignition system. And that is um, always a bugbear with these things. You find that you'll adjust the points, and it doesn't matter how when you lubricate the heels and, and the condition of the points, within a thousand miles the engine performance slowly drops off as the points gap starts to wear, as the points heel wears, the points gap closes up, and then you tend to find that you're losing uh, timing advance. So one of the big things I've done on this, and one of the major modifications to this bike, is I've fitted electronic ignition. Now, I initially fitted electronic ignition from the modules you can buy online, um, Sparkride, I think they're called. They're a little module that goes behind the, the uh, points, cap, which, points cover, which is there. Um, and initially, they worked fine. Um, so I gave me electronic ignition, got rid of the points. But what I was finding was, it would start fine when it was cold, but because the, the, the modules are mounted directly on the engine, the heat would get to the modules, and when you started it when it was hot, you couldn't get it to start. The only way you could get it to start was to really spin the engine over fast, and the starter motors on these are notoriously slow to turn over. You can't really kick it quick enough with a kick start. So what you were ending up doing was sitting in the petrol station, pressing the starter motor and kicking it as hard as you could, and luckily, if you get a spark, it would burst into life. But it was, it was, um, it was no good, it was unacceptable, you couldn't use it like that. So decided to move on to another system and they were the ignit electronic ignition systems they used to use on the VWs and the Audis back in the 80s I don't remember there's a little black module and I'll show you it in a minute and they are basically a Hall effect sensor so what that allowed me to do is to uh, get rid of the electronic modules that were actually mounted on the engine and fit Hall effect sensors onto the side of the engine here and behind this uh, side panel I uh, fitted the modules and that's basically allowed me to have the modules away from the hot engine and therefore not affected by the heat and therefore in theory it should, shouldn't cause any problems with starting. Now this has only been on for the last couple of days but um, it certainly seems to have worked and I think what I'll do is I'll give you a quick demonstration of where they are and we'll fire it up and you can have a listen. Okay, so here's the little uh, module I fitted, and it's very straightforward. This is where the points would have been before. It's still using the old mechanical advance system, uh, so it's relying on the centrifugal advance still. It's not electronic advanced. So if you buy one of these modules, you've got fixed advance. You'll have to, you have to use a mechanical advance system. Uh, so basically, this is the advance unit behind the back here. You can see it through this cutout in the hole here. Basically, what I've done is I've got a piece of peak, which is a high temperature plastic, milled a slot in it, and put a powerful magnet mounted there and it has to be the south pole facing outwards it can't be the north pole because you use the north pole the hall effect sensors won't work and you can see under here these two hall effect sensors one here and one here they're the two hall effects as I say it's a 180 degree crank so they have to be firing at 90 degrees to each other because the power strokes uh, uh, not evenly spaced. If it's a 360D crank, so where the pistons come up and down together, they would be 180 degrees offset of each other. So they're the Hall effect sensors, and that's mounted on a piece of fiberglass. That can be metal. These these uh, sensors are capable of sort of putting up with 110 degrees temperature, uh, and it it gets to about 85, 90 in here. And mounted on fiberglass, obviously that's even better. And then the modules are mounted here, and here's, these are the two modules. And you probably recognise the look of them if you've worked on old cars before. There's two of those electronic ignition modules, and basically they power the coils, and the wiring from the uh, Hall effect sensor comes into here. You basically got the ground lead. You've got two wires go, go up to the uh, coil. Uh, there's a spare connection here, which is pin seven. That if you need that, that's you can put an additional electronic rev count on it. Obviously, you don't need that because I've got a mechanical one. It's a bit of a shoehorn in there, as you can see. Uh, and the, at the moment, the, the flasher relay is going to have to be relocated. That's easy enough to do. I'm just going to put some extender wires on it and mount it under the seat, or maybe mount it back here. There's plenty of room there, so that's not a problem. Um, also, out, coming back to the things with the on these motorbikes. The original bikes had self-cancelling indicators, and the self-cancelling indicators, I don't know, you see the module is actually crammed behind there somewhere, I don't think you can actually see it, it's behind all that wiring. But if the, your self-cancelling indica indicators aren't working, make sure you've got a three connection terminal on the, on the flasher unit, and this one hasn't, and therefore my flasher uh, don't in self-cancel. Um, obviously you need to make sure the module's working, but if, if you've still not had any luck, it's either going to be, that's got the wrong flasher unit in it, your, your um, module's packed up, or there's a reed switch inside the speedometer, and if that's fractured or broken, it won't self-cancel, it relies on time and uh, uh, distance measured by the speedometer.
anyway coming back to this so yeah this is the way it's all mounted so the electronic modules here it's out of the way it's out of the rain ideally i would have liked to mount it so the connection's hanging down so the water doesn't get in but i washed the bike this morning and it's bone dry in there so you can fit that up with some silicon maybe or some silicon grease just to keep the water out but at the moment it doesn't look like it's going to be a problem so that gives you fully electronic ignition apart from the advanced so let's give it a start and see how it does Happy to go over at 500 rpm. Oh, not quite, but there you go. Runs absolutely fine with electronic ignition. Um, just more reliable. Um, you don't get those sometimes. I don't know if you've ever noticed when you're accelerating hard, you suddenly just get a, like a brief misfire, like it one cylinder's missed briefly. Usually that's a bit of crap on the points or something like that that's causing the problem. But uh, yeah, I think it's a well worth upgrade to any bike that's got points on it and you're interested in keeping and want it to be reliable. So yeah, that's my uh, latest uh, project. Thanks for watching.